Travis, it's me. Are you ready for your last battle to the death? Yeah. You know where to go? It's close by. Hold on. Someone's at the door. It's my first time here. Isn't it? A VIP just showed up. Talk to you soon. Sure. Sylvia, I can't figure you out. You don't like me? I didn't say that. But there's a lot of things about you I don't get. You lie. You're greedy. You're a fucking contradiction in heels. You hate me. Well, your personality kind of sucks. So you do hate me. I'm crazy about you. What do you mean? Fuck if I know. Downward fucking dog! Hey guys, welcome back to No More Heroes 2. If you didn't notice, the uh, letters that fell off the uh, Motel No More Heroes sign uh, made it so that the remainder of the sign spelled more arrows. Anyway, uh, seeing as how we're about to start the final level, I decided to go back to my trusty uh, cyber cell hoodie. And, uh, I don't know, I'm just walking around the, the motel room for the last time, uh, as we prepare to head off to the climactic final stage in rank one battle. I don't remember anything else, but you see, I've forgotten everything. This place is closing today. The owner's shutting us down and moving back to his hometown. It'd be nice to go home too. Since it's the last day, are you expecting something special? What are you expecting? Why do you listen? Well, it doesn't matter. I never really expected to know. You came here almost every day. You paid to hear me ramble on. And that gave me as much happiness as I can hope for. After falling this far, there's nothing left to lose. Every day as joyless as the one before it. With eyes closed, I continue to endure my existence. But I feel that I've been able to open them just a little. Today, since it's our last chance, I want to hear your voice. Let me hear what you sound like, who you are. Just once. So the game's plot points are starting to wrap up. Here we are, and the uh, Pizza Bat Tower. Uh, I really like this song, it's called Debt Free. Unfortunately, the level is so long that we're going to be hearing it at double speed the whole time, pretty much. Um, something that's really cool is uh, you start this level with max ecstasy gauge, and uh, actually, um, since I started recording the uh, 
the revenge missions when I was ranked 2, or like right before I started this stage basically. Um, you Every stage you start from, uh, every stage you start when you're about to begin the rank 1 fight, you start with max ecstasy gauge, which is actually really uh, useful. So anyway, of course, our first enemies are a couple of uh, gunmen and uh, three guys with lightsabers. Um, I didn't want to use my uh, my power up, which I finally, finally remembered by uh, like while editing this that Travis in fact says the name of the move when he starts it up. I just haven't heard it the whole playthrough. It does have a name, and it's called B1 with the Force. So that's what the move is called. When your ecstasy gauge is max and you press minus to activate that move that I've been using the whole game, it's called B1 with the Force. Um, I didn't activate it because I wanted to, uh, uh, I just wanted to be able to use the, uh, you know, all that length from Peony, but, um, whatever. Anyway, uh, in this stage, seeing as how there are so many enemies, I start using, uh, some, some tactics. Uh, basically, against the fat guys, a really good thing to do is uh, do a full combo against them, and then uh, you can just do like a melee attack and they'll get dizzy. Uh, there's probably a better way to do it. You could just use all melee attacks, but uh, I don't know. Uh, it seems like the way that I first described always seems to get them dizzy. Um, but yeah, of course, this being the final level is probably... Uh, the one of the longest or one of the longest um, so I mean just be prepared for uh, some, some shit because uh, there are actually two halves to this level actually no the second part isn't really a half but there are two segments and uh, yeah so as you complete floors um, you start heading up the elevator there's a uh, there's a store here called Uncanny Valley, by the way, which I thought was really funny. I think I paused in front of it for a second. I'm not sure. It's that store over there with the green, I think. Um, so yeah, come up to the second floor, and there will be enemies coming out of the elevators. Uh, I, be I believe this repeats on the third floor as well. Um, this is actually a, a, like a shopping mall of some kind, and then... Uh, as you uh, as you keep climbing up, you eventually get to the pizza bat segment of the uh, tower. So, yeah. So yeah, of course, grabs are going to be your best friend in this level, which is why I use them so frequently. Uh, plenty of fat guys. There's no shortage of them in this level. Um, yeah, it's pretty much just the most annoying enemies in the game. Uh, I think I also showcase a new grad that you don't see in any other part of the playthrough. Um, that one, yeah. it's. I, th I think it's really cool. I've never seen it before. Uh, Actually, if I use my original takes for the first two revenge missions, then uh, we'll see it there. Uh, I was trying to get around to those chests, but um, that's not the way. Uh, you just keep going forward. Um, the problem with the revenge missions is I got part of the way... I started the third one, and then my Wiimote batteries died, and then I went to get my backups, and those died too. So, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to... I still have to redo the first and second one because I just shut off the Wii after that, so I lost my par my progress. But um, I don't know. Wow, I just <coughs> I just hate how um you take like three hits from an enemy and it drops your ecstasy gauge completely. because the thing is like you see they're just the enemies are freaking everywhere so uh be one of the forces uh becomes a very viable 
option, considering you get max ecstasy gauge so often now. Alright, and here are those two chests. So, you know, I actually, uh, I'm not, like, coming up with the best commentary, because I actually, oh, no, that was Uncanny Valley, okay. Uh, I actually don't have, uh, too much to say about this part of the level, um, because, or about the level in general, really, because it's just a bunch of killing enemies. Um, it's not as bad as the parking lot before Margaret, because that was just ass. Uh, I think... This level probably matches that level in terms of number of enemies, but it actually spreads it out and there's music playing, so you don't feel like shooting yourself the whole time. I actually really want to, uh, get, like, I didn't really feel like, uh, recording the commentary for this, because I didn't have anything, like, interesting in mind to talk about for when, uh, I got tired of discussing the level, but, uh, I kind of want to get this done so I can start, a uh, Rechain of Memories tomorrow, because, uh, I go back to school in less than two weeks now, and, uh, at the very least, I need to record, m like, the whole game and then uh, edit it, hopefully. Um, I figure it's more important to record it because I can just edit it in my spare time while I'm up there, uh, which uh, hopefully I'll have some. But, um, because, you know, my, fresh my uh, first year, I was kind of, it was my first time in college, so, you know, I had, like, troubles ma trouble managing my time and whatever, but, uh, there were plenty of times where I was, like, free, where I could have done something, and I just didn't, because, uh, I was too lazy, but, um, yeah. Definitely, I'm gonna upload Sora's story. Uh, Riku's story, uh, I mean, Reverse Rebirth, I'm not too positive. Anyway, that's the end of the, uh, first part of the level. Um, so just get on this elevator, and you'll go to the second half. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm not sure if I'll have time to record Reverse Rebirth before I leave. I might, but I don't know. So, the, uh, of course, the No More Heroes 1 theme song starts playing. And, of course, I've got to switch to Bloodberry for at least a little while. Um, yeah, uh, fun fact, this song is actually my ringtone. That's how much I like it. Uh, it's probably one of my favorite songs from uh, No More Heroes 1. Uh, so of course, Peony's low battery life, very evident considering killing three enemies almost drained it completely. <clears throat> Apparently it has very strong charged attacks, but uh, of course, I don't, uh, I hardly use charged attacks in this game, so I wouldn't know. And we finally get to see be one of the force uh, with Bloodberry. It's very fast. If I had known it was that good, I would have used it more probably, but, uh, you know, hindsight's 2020, and I'm not re-recording this game. Um, not that it was particularly annoying compared to some other games that I've recorded, but, uh, it's not really, uh, I don't know. Some parts of it were really annoying. The stages, coming up with commentary for the stages is so annoying. Um, oh my god, I hate... I hate, I hate this. Um, so here I try to switch to Peony, and of course I keep getting hit before I can switch, so I have to get away. Um, <clears throat> I should have switched to Camellia Mark III, because, you know, um, it's also from No More Heroes 1, but uh, I just decided to lame it out and go with Peony. Now, um, that is called, uh, Anarchy in the Galaxy. It's, uh, the most powerful, um, dark side move from No More Heroes 1. 
and it is also the most powerful one in this game. Uh, before I said that, uh, I don't remember which one I said was, oh yeah, I said that the, that Tiger Style was the strongest, no, that one is the strongest, because Tiger Style, yes, you're killing things in one hit, but you still have to actually do something. That one is an instant kill to everything in the room automatically. So, yeah, Anarchy in the Galaxy, that's the one time in the game I've gotten it. Uh, it's 777, uh, the Tiger Style was, uh, three bars. Um... Yeah. Anyway, uh, I believe this is one of the final rooms. Um, they just throw a bunch of enemies at you coming through the door. Uh, oh, and there I used a dark side mode. I mean, no, not dark side. Uh, dark step, I think it's called. Something step. Um, I don't know how to activate it in this game. I know that in the first game, it's really useful, especially if you're playing on bitter and want to beat Henry within like an hour. <laughs> Because Henry takes like 900 hits on Bitter in the first game. But, um, I don't know how to activate it in this game, and this is different anyway. I know, I guess, uh, when you use it on, on a normal enemy, you, uh, do a one-hit KO. Um, but in the first game, you just get behind them, and you're able to do a bunch of rapid slashes. Which is useful, because, uh, half the time when you're trying to attack an enemy in No More Heroes 1, uh, you just hear the, the clanking sound because, you know, they always have their guard up. Um, yeah, I just heard some weird noise. Um, I don't know what it is. Alright, I still got two more rooms to go. Awesome. <clears throat> now, one annoying thing to keep in mind is that this level, before the final boss battle, they don't give you any, uh... Oh, Jesus Christ, my mind. They don't give you uh, a health box or a, or a battery box. So, um... Try to save that full pizza for... Try not to use it now, because uh, you're probably going to get hit again before you finish the level. And uh, there's not going to be any other way to heal yourself before the final boss. So uh, if you want to start the final boss with full health, you're going to have to save that pizza or die against him so that you can replay. Um, I was trying to roll backwards into that battery, but uh, of course I was having problems because of the wall. Um... Yeah, those lightsaber guys are definitely the most annoying ones in the game. And I hate the I hate how the brawlers can grab you as well. Alright, here we go. This is the last set of enemies. Um, just take them out as you've been taking them out. Um, I think the main problem that I'm having with coming up with commentary is that there's not really... Um, all the enemies in this stage are enemies that you've seen before, and there's nothing really different about them. Um, and probably by the time you're halfway through the game, you've seen like all the enemies that the game has to offer. Um, so, <clears throat> I mean, there's not really much to talk about during the stages. I kind of have to make things up, which, uh, I, I mean, because I'm just like, the game is definitely kind of a masher, because I'm just mashing A over and over, uh, then pressing B at the end of a combo to get them dizzy, and then doing a throw, and then every once in a while when uh, I get max ecstasy gauge, I use B1 with the force. Um, I mean, that's how it's been for most of the, for most of the game. Now, I love No More Heroes 2 a lot, but uh, I kind of have to acknowledge that that's a flaw that it has. Um, it's very it's very button mashy. Uh, and there's not, like, a super huge amount of strategy that you use in defeating the bosses. And, in fact, there's not really much difference to the stages besides the scenery. Like, of course, the stages look cool. Uh, and I really like the music during this, during this part of the stage. But... 
It's like every stage is basically the same thing. Chloe Walsh's stage changes it up, and some bosses don't have stages, but other than that, it's just like very repetitive. So, um, that, that's been one of the challenges in uh, creating this playthrough. Uh, also, you probably noticed, but, or I hope you noticed, but, um, I tried to make it a little bit more, like, professional this time. Like, uh, I have. I had the song lyrics during uh, Margaret. I have the song that's playing in the area in a in a in a caption. Um, you know, uh, I have the post roll thing at the end of each video. Uh, I try to tone down the swearing and I try to be informative. So I'm hoping that I did a good job with that because most of my playthroughs I feel like are really laid back and I kind of wanted to do something that took a, a little bit more effort. Um, so yeah. Anyway, that was just me going back to refill my health, and now we begin the final boss battle. Ah, Bart! There you are! Travis! Took you long enough! Thought the suspense was gonna kill me! How will he make his entrance? Is he emo or grunge? What's his fighting style? How's his broke-ass face gonna look when he dies? So much hostility! Why? Why'd you kill him? Ironic question coming from an assassin! Did you honestly think you could take so many lives and never suffer retribution? Have you never even seen a kung fu movie, spy flick, or western? Shakespeare, for God's sake! If you wanted revenge, you should have come for me! Not only did you murder my father, but my two brothers as well. That is why I took your best friend's life. Makes sense, Travis. It's called poetic justice. Go to hell. Don't ever compare Bishop with your shithead family. So naive, Travis. If you have someone to protect, you will lose them eventually. See for yourself. Now you're feeling it. That's your life losing all meaning. You've got nothing left except this fight. Now I know you'll put all you have into this. You're gonna fucking pay. Yes, a fight to the death. Get angry. So angry you start convulsing. Now, draw your katana. I'll relish every moment, every second of this kill. May you savor your death as well. Enough! Let the final battle begin! Right, so if you've never played No More Heroes 1, or if you haven't played it in a while, you might not understand what Jasper Fat Jr. is talking about. In those games, there were missions where you would be paid to kill people. Three of the missions... It might have been three, or it might have been, uh, like... They might have been consolidated, I don't know. But, um... You had to kill, in that game, they were called Pizza Butt, uh... CEOs. There were three of them. In this game, uh, I guess because Pizza Butt and Pizza Bat would be said the same in Japanese, Pizza, pizza Bato, um, I guess they retranslated it as Pizza Bat in this game, and Jasper Bat Jr. is the uh, son slash brother of those three CEOs. So of course, now he's fueled uh, by revenge, just as so many other people in this series are fueled by revenge. Travis, Jaffrabat Jr., uh, Skelter Helter, uh, Gene from the first game. Um, revenge is a very common theme in No More Heroes. Anyway, um, talking about the boss himself, this is by far his easiest form. Uh, basically, you just stand under him. Uh, when the lasers consolidate like that, just roll and it'll uh, hit him and get him dizzy. When they don't consolidate, they're just going to shoot randomly around the room. You'll be all, you'll always be safe as long as you're standing under him. So just swing at him. So just uh, get out from under him after the lasers go away, and uh, just swing the sword, and uh, you'll automatically do a weapon clash with him. Uh, you need to do several of these to be able to advance the boss fight past the first phase. Can 
Henry. Don't be deceived so easily. They're just replicas. Serious? Jeez. Well, aren't I a gullible idiot? These are pretty sweet, actually. Think I can take one of these home? After you kill him, why not? I'll handle his ring piece goons. Thanks, bro. Now, my problem with that is, where did Henry come from? There are no other skyscrapers this tall in the city, and I doubt he has a plane that he just uses for the hell of it. He did the same thing in No More Heroes 1. He comes out of nowhere in the Let's Shake fight and drops from the sky in the middle of an open field with nothing tall in the surroundings. So I don't know, clearly Henry's magical. Anyway, this begins the second part of the fight. It's very easy because he no longer has those laser attacks. So just do the weapon clashes with him and he should go down pretty easily. He doesn't even have that much HP. Right, so this is Jasper Bat Jr. Form 2. I'm really hoping you didn't think the final boss was that easy. Uh, I think this is considered by many people to be one of the most difficult, or at the very least one of the most annoying bosses in the game. Since I started the fight with full ecstasy gauge, I decided to unload it on him at the beginning because, um, I know I'm probably going to get hit and lose it and I'm not going to rebuild it again for the whole fight, so I may as well just get the free damage at the beginning now. Um, so, there are a lot of reasons this boss is annoying. Um, he has high health and he has ridiculous strength. Um, he has this teleport punch, it's like three hits. It comes out almost instantly. Now maybe that quote he said beforehand is supposed to be to the tell for it. So I guess you have to be listening. Because there's no actual vis visual uh, thing that he does before he's about to use it. The problem with it is that it comes out so fast that you might not be able to dodge it. Like it comes out faster than you can dodge. And if you guard the first hit, you're automatically going to get hit by the next two. Um... He can send those bats at you, it's not that big of a deal. He also has that bear hug. Uh, I didn't get hit by it in this fight, so I don't know what it does, but it's presumably a grab of his own. Um, on a humorous note, apparently, I don't know if this is official, but this guy is called Pizza Batman. Um, <coughs> which has the obvious Bruce Wayne and Jasper Bat and Batman, you know, Jasper Bat Jr. and Pizza Batman uh, reference. Uh, you know. Except that Bruce Wayne got over his desire for revenge, and Jasper Bat Jr. did not. Uh, Jasper Bat Jr. also has, uh, fuck it, Jasper. Jasper also has that, uh, a, a normal teleport. Um, yeah, uh, it's kind of annoying, but it's not that big of a deal. Um, and he can, he can block. Um, I pause a lot in this fight, just in case I have to, like, scratch my head or something. I don't want to, uh, accidentally take damage, but, uh, it's not like that really helps, because I still get hit a lot. Oh yeah, and he has that punch. Uh, could be pretty annoying to dodge. I don't know. Um, and a shockwave. Okay. Uh, Peony might not be the best idea for this boss, because even though it does a lot of damage, it is slow, um, and, you know, it doesn't have the greatest, uh, length in the game until after, uh, you build up Ecstasy Gauge, but, um, whatever, hindsight is twenty twenty. Alright, so now he's going to enter his, uh, the last part of his fight. By far, <coughs> excuse me, by far the most annoying. Um, he starts getting that. It's his, uh, teleport punch, but mixed in with, uh, like a wind tunnel. Uh, be 
very cautious during this part of the fight because that move actually becomes an instant kill move if you're facing a window or if uh, you're between him and the window because if you get hit by the wind tunnel and it carries you towards the windows you'll get knocked out of the window and die um there was actually a reference to this at the very beginning of the game if you go back to part one and rewatch the cutscene uh, where Travis and Sylvia are talking after Travis learns about uh, Bishop's death you see a you know that they're across the street from the tower and you just see a guy fall from the sky and land on top of a car and they don't it's not even acknowledged by them but I'm pretty sure that was supposed to be a reference to that attack um, yeah and of course I die but uh, I just use the the continue cuz fuck that and then I switched to Rose Nasty which I probably should have done in the beginning um, the teleport punch and the whirlwind punch are probably the most annoying parts of the fight but uh somehow by the grace of god I managed to beat Jasper Bat Jr. form 2 on my first try which like never happens That's a wrap. Uh, no, not yet. Now that's hideous. <laughs> Rich assassins pull the craziest shit. <laughs> well, we almost got him. The rest is on you. Wait a second. You're already here. You might as well keep fighting. It's not happening, brother. I can't be associated with that travesty. I mean, I've got standards, for fuck's sake. Suit yourself. Now, I'm gonna get my revenge once and for all. <laughs> Come on, Prez. Unleash your hate, your anger, everything. I'll take it all and fucking kill you with it! Of course, to balance out the fact that I beat Jasper Bad Jr. Form 2 on my first try, I died a shit ton of times against this form, and I'm really not sure why, because this is, uh the second easiest form. I say second because the first is path pathetically easy. Um, so he has like a couple of punch attacks and uh, slamming the ground attacks. They're pretty easy to dodge, you just have to keep your distance. My problem is I kept standing right next to him and uh, not being able to dodge the moves in time. The, the punch that he does to the side, not that, uh, that. When you're up close, I think it's like impossible to dodge because I was timing it pretty much perfectly and every time it hit me. Um, as you can see, his health isn't anything fantastic and this is really just supposed to be like making fun of all those video games that have final bosses that like always morph into some ridiculous form because that makes sense as you get weaker you somehow gain access to stronger abilities like that's not what that's not a thing that happens but um uh, you know realistically I mean but um yeah uh, I don't know, this form isn't really anything special. Uh, the second form is really the thing to watch out for the most. Uh, as long as you uh, just keep your distance and be smart about it, it should be easy. Also, uh, that laser is a weapon clash. It's not very obvious, uh, but if you get hit by it, you will, it will do a lot of damage. But as l again, like the weapon clashes from the first form, as long as you just uh, swing your sword, uh, you should automatically start the weapon clash. It shouldn't be like... Uh, that difficult. They're pretty forgiving with the timing. Um, I could have gone in for more hits, but I was being stupidly cautious. Um, yeah. Uh, and this move, I have no idea if there's a way to dodge it. Um, I think it's impossible to go through that move without taking damage, because, like, you can't roll fast enough to fully avoid the damage, and it always depletes all your battery uh, it's so retarded but um 
Yeah, I think this uh, begins the last uh, segment of the fight for me. Um, if he's uh, if he's like that, like with his stomach uh, close to you, and you manage to land uh, <coughs> one of the one of the death blows, I guess they're not really death blows uh, at this point, but whatever. Uh, you gain access to his nose, which uh, you do several death blows against that. And the boss is dead, and the game is complete. Hooray. Go! Oh, fuck! Finally, the man we've been after the whole game is dead. Of course, Travis is dumb and didn't exactly plan that too well because now he's falling from the top of a skyscraper. But some deus ex machina bullshit and Sylvia comes and saves him, somehow knowing exactly where he, is, or where he was going to fall. Now that's paradise. Right, so, um, me being me, because I couldn't think of anything to say during the uh, final level, I ended up using a lot of the things that I wanted to say during the credits there, but screw it. <clears throat> so yeah, um, with this playthrough I decided to try something different, be a little bit more official, I guess. Um, I like the end result, but, uh, I'm kind of dying to, uh, start recom so I can do something that's a little bit more relaxed, um, because this took a lot of editing, and, uh, you know, if you watched, uh, Storm Silver, for example, that was a lot more, like, laid back, like my usual style, so this is, uh, I don't know, I just wanted to see if I could actually stick to this. Um, I originally wanted to upload one part a day, but of course, uh, that didn't turn out because I actually, like, didn't have the time to one, uh, one day. Um, but still, uh, I think, compared to the number of parts, the amount of time that it took me to upload it, uh, is pretty short, uh, you know, better than... Wow, Jasper Matt Jr. was Yuri Lowenthal? Holy shit. Um... Yeah, compared to, like, Sonic Colors, I think I did a good job of getting this up in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, of course, uh, I didn't do it as fast as I wanted to, so now I have a lot less time to do Rechain of Memories, but whatever. Um, so yeah, this game, as I, as I said in the first part, it's one of my favorite, uh, action games that I've played. Uh, it does have its faults, which I've discussed. The levels get really repetitive. Um, and they don't really change much up, uh, it's basically just linear paths the whole way through. <coughs> but of course, you're really playing the game for the boss fights, and those are the moments when the game does shine, because each boss has its own charm, personality, you know, and, uh, its own, like, level of difficulty, kind of. Um, yeah. So, I really, so, oh, and of course, the soundtrack. The soundtrack is, of course, uh, one of the best parts of this game, I believe. Uh, the whole reason that I had the, uh, the uh, music titles as a caption, um, to encourage people to look up the songs in the soundtrack. I really like this song, by the way, playing in the background, it's called No More No. Uh, but then it switches to this song, which doesn't play in any other part of the game, uh, Do You Want More? Um, 
I don't know if it's titled that way to hint towards like a third No More Heroes, which has pretty much been confirmed to be uh, in development or at least planned. But uh, you know, I don't know, whatever. I feel like I've been saying but uh or whatever or things along those lines a lot during this part, and I apologize for that. Um. So yeah, I really hope that you guys uh, enjoyed watching this playthrough. Uh, I know that I'm not the best player in the world at this game, but uh, I mean that's kind of typical for me, so I don't think it was that big of a surprise. Um, and if I do say so myself, there were some parts of the game where I performed pretty admirably. Um, I just can't think of them right now, but they exist. Uh, Shoutouts to New Destroy Man for being the most annoying boss in the game. Fuck you. Uh, and yeah, I'm not gonna do any fancy credit sequence like I did with Storm Silver because I put enough work into this. And if I have to make another one of, of something like that, like that credit sequence, anytime soon, again, I'm I might just shoot myself, literally. Finally, here she is, Sylvia. I was looking for you. My eyes. Can I open my eyes? Yeah, it's real. Let's go home. Santa Destroy needs us. Travis, my no more hero. I don't know if you can tell... Oh, great way to end that cutscene, right? I don't know if you can tell with my crappy video quality, but I'm pretty sure you can see Travis's face reflected in that glass. Um... So yeah, it's revealed that the whole time, Sylvia's been telling you the story of the game, and uh, Travis has been her silent listener. Um, but that just about concludes this part, and playthrough. Almost. So thanks for watching, guys, and see you next time.